Good morning. Can everybody can everybody hear me okay? In the back, can you hear us good? If not, we'll turn it up a little bit. I would like to take this opportunity to welcome everyone out this morning for the Max Home uh, celebration, welcoming them to Sullivan and for their grand opening and ribbon cutting. I would uh, like to uh, especially thank uh, Governor Bentley and his staff for being here and the other state officials that we have and other elected officials. It's a great day for Sullivan. And we look forward to hearing, uh, hearing from the Max Home officials and other officials as well. At this point in time, I'm going to ask a local pastor, uh, Angela Mincat, if she would come and deliver an invocation as we get started. Good morning, Sullivan. Good morning, Sullivan. This is the day that the Lord has made, and I will rejoice and be glad in it. Thank you, Honorable Mayor Scott Bowman. Please buy your kids. Most heavenly and gracious God, we thank you for being God. We praise you for your holy name, for all the blessings that come from you. Father, we ask for your presence as we celebrate Max Holmes and his grand opening. We bless its leadership, the employees, and its overall success. We thank you, God, for how this corporation will impact our local economy. Father, we thank you for our local and county and state officials that make day-to-day -day decisions that provide economical developments that improve the health and wellness of our community at large. Father, we ask that you continue to keep us in the center of your will. Keep your hands on us, Father. These are the blessings we ask in the name of Jesus we pray. Say amen. amen. Thank you, Angela. And uh, next we'll hear from David Thornell, who is the Executive Director of C3. Glad you all are here. Uh, Governor, we do work together in economic development. We come together daily. We come together today to celebrate uh, an achievement that uh, was accomplished by everyone's hard work and uh, unselfish desire to grow the region. And that's, uh, in C3 region's case, Fayetteville, Lamar, and Marion County. And I want to introduce uh, some special folks that are here, and uh, so we'd like to really have to be any and every one of you. Thank you, thank you all for being here. Um, many of you have important jobs. I have a dangerous job to just recognize a few people in this time that we have. Uh, of course, have all of the Lamar County commissioners, and uh, Judge Johnny Rogers may speak a little later, but I'm also proud to have the uh, Fayette County probate judge, William Oswald, uh, who is here have several of our mayors from the C3 region. We also appreciate them being here. Mayor Glenn Crawford from Vernon, the county seat here in Omar County. Mayor Phil Seagraves from Buin. Mayor Ray Nelson from Fayette is also here. Uh, I noticed that we have both the, uh, the uh, outgoing and incoming directors of Northwest Alabama Gas, just Jerry Self, who has recently retired in the process of doing so, and then Kelly Kennett, who has just replaced him and just arrived in the well, Kelly, look forward to working with him. Uh, this facility is served by Tom Bigby Electric, and Jim McRae, who's the chair of that board, is here, uh, as is Steve Foshi, who serves on our board. Steve's the general manager of Tom Bigby. Uh, Paul Housel up front here with uh, Congressman uh, Adderholt's office. At the dean of Bevel State in Fayette, it's Max Weaver that has joined us. Sharon Owens, Career Center based in uh, Fayette at Bevel campus, but uh, Sharon's been a big help here in Lamar County and works the region for the State Career Center. Her and her associates are here and we appreciate that. The uh, Lamar County Revenue Commissioner, David Boyette, is with us. And then I did mention um, that we have Steve Foshi uh, here with us uh, that's on the C3 board. Uh, David Logan, our chairman, just recently retired from Alabama Power, is with us. And, uh, also, uh, local board member Bonnie Reeves, uh, Britt Leipzig, who's our manager of the Alabama Power Office here in Selgent, serves uh, the Selgent region also, is with us, and Wayne Christian, who is our immediate past chairman of uh, C3. We we'll have our staff, as uh, gang's all here. It's uh, Ron Davis, who's vice president of business development, uh, Renee Shirley, and Katie Crump. And uh, it takes a lot to make something like this happen. I'm glad to see a lot of you here this morning to celebrate it. Especially please have the governor back with us. Was in Hackleburg in our region on Wednesday to open the new grocery store there. We appreciate 
put together, uh, and also Jim Byer, that you'll hear from, is, is so supportive of our region, and we couldn't accomplish these things without them. You know. So if you could just join me in, in giving uh, those I've introduced to and Thank you, David. Uh, David does a great job for our region on economic development, and uh, he's been a tremendous help on this project uh, as we work toward uh, toward this day. And I can't thank him enough for all his work. Uh, also, I noticed we have uh, Eddie Pickle here, who is a uh, mayor of Beaverton, and somewhere in our audience as well. I want to recognize him and thank him for being here as well. And uh, also uh, have a pleasure to have uh, John Mark Bentley with us as well. John's in the back. Uh, if you're wondering, his last name is Bentley. He is Governor Bentley's son, and uh, he's a good friend of mine. And uh, he is uh, works in the correspondent division with uh, Bryant Bank, Bryant Bank out of Tuscaloosa. And we work together on a lot of projects, and he travels throughout the state on a daily basis. So we uh, we appreciate him taking time out of his schedule to be here as well. To give you a brief history of just kind of how we got here today. Uh, Sometime in my first term, I think it was around 2006, the previous manufacturing facility, facility that was here uh, closed, and we lost a lot of jobs. And uh, it was a it was a trying time. And then fast forward to 2008 with an economic downturn, and we thought, what a great facility we have here, and how easy it would be to just get someone in here. And uh, we found out real quickly that that uh, it was not going to be as easy as we thought. And uh, Doug McCullough, who's with us uh, here today, he worked with NAI Chase Commercial, who had this building listed. And I met Doug uh, along the way. And uh, we even made a, what my wife called a cheesy video that we uh, stuck on YouTube. And I got home that day, and she looked at it, and she uh, laughed me out of the house and told me that uh, I didn't need to quit my day job because I was not an actor. But. Um, Anyway, I thought it was pretty good, and I thought Doug did real good. Uh, Doug did way better than I did. But I did get the last laugh about it because we did uh, try to recruit a, uh, a company out of uh, Canada to this facility previously. And uh, the guy told us when he came to the meeting, he said, the only reason we looked at this facility is because we saw your video on YouTube. So anyway, I thought that was... Uh, very fitting that uh, at least I got the last laugh and uh, maybe my acting career is not over yet. Uh, during the time frame that we worked trying to show prospects this building, uh, ownership changed of the building, it got vandalized a few times and uh, we were uh, I guess frustrated a lot of times with trying to say you know what can we do to make this to make this work to try to get some industrial recruitment here, get some jobs here, and uh, it just uh, it just wasn't working. And then one day in October of last year, David Thornell called me on a Wednesday. I, I can remember it very clearly. He said, uh, hey, Scott, we got a prospect that wants to look at that building. And I said, okay, when they want to look at it? He said, tomorrow. I said, David, you do realize that the grass hadn't been cut. We don't have any power on it. And he said, well, they're wanting to come tomorrow. I said, we'll do the best we can to try to make it happen. So I called Kenneth. He's here. He's sitting right here in front. He's my, one of my maintenance guys. I said, Kenneth, meet me at the facility at 4 o'clock. we got to get some grass cut. So as he always does, he didn't ask me any questions. He showed up, brought his lawnmower, and he went to cutting grass. We didn't have time to get the lights on because obviously all, all the electrical panels were gone. They'd been vandalized. We didn't have any power. But we did the best we could. We got the grass cut in the front. The next day, Larry and Bruno came. The guys from the commission came up, Judge Rogers, David did. We walked through the facility with them, raised the doors, get some light in. They looked at it, said, well, it seemed like they had some interest in it. But being the good businessmen that they are, they weren't going to tip their hand as to exactly what their plans were. So they told us they wanted their CEO to uh, see the facility, Marty Silver, and they said he'll be in in about a week. So we said, okay, maybe that gives us a little time to try to get things together. 
So I called one of my contractors, Paul McElmore. I don't think Paul's here today, but I told Paul, I said, Paul, we've got to get the lights on in that building. I don't care what it takes. And uh, so they came up and looked at it. We called Steve Foshi and said, Steve, we need some help. Steve was a blessing. He said, whatever you need, we'll get it done. So they came and worked all week, and we got the grounds in a little bit acceptable manner. Next Thursday, when Marty showed up, we had the lights on. We had the grounds in a little bit better shape. Marty looked at the facility and seemed to be, you know, well pleased with what he saw. He said, hopefully we'll let you know something in about a week. Next day, I was in a meeting in Hamilton. David sends me a text, and he says, Scott, can you be on a conference call with Larry Gentry, the CFO, who's sitting here today, he'll speak later. He said he wants to talk about the building. I said, sure. So I stepped out of the meeting, we got on the call with him. Larry like said, Scott, we're ready to go. If y'all can buy the building for a reasonable cost, we think we can make it work. Well, I didn't know really what to say, because we had uh, tried so long to try to get someone interested in the building that, that we wanted to commit to come here. And I was, I was happy and I was also a little bit apprehensive because I didn't know about the availability of being able to purchase the building. So I immediately called Doug, told Doug, I said, hey, we got somebody that's looked at the building. Keep in mind, I've only known these guys, I've met them only a week. I didn't know anything about their background. I didn't know anything about the condition of the company. I just said, we're going to take a chance on this. I told Doug, I said, I don't know if they're going to come. We're going to buy the building whether they come or whether they don't. I said, because we don't, we don't have a building right now, and if we're going to recruit an industry, we're going to have to have one. So we moved forward, and I told Doug to make us an offer on the building. He did. I didn't expect a quick response, but I guess it was just a good Lord. Next week, he contacted me back and said, hey, uh, they've got a counter offer, and was, which was reasonable, and then we negotiated. We met in the middle. So I immediately contacted Tim Wadsworth, who is sitting here, he's a city attorney, but he's also a state representative for a district as well. I told Tim where we were, and I said, we got to have some letters of intent prepared. So he quickly got those things done, and uh, we got everything signed with Max Home for them to come ultimately in February of this year. But I can't thank Tim enough for his quick response. I can't thank Randall Harrison, our city engineer, enough for, enough for getting the the numbers together that we had to have when we uh, got the meeting set up with the DECA and with Commerce and with ARC to get some assistance for the things that we needed. Jim Byers is here and he'll talk about that a little bit later. But sometime later, I shared with Larry, I told Larry, I said, you know, during this whole process, I often wondered why we couldn't get anybody in this building because I felt like it was such a great facility. But I've come to the realization that the reason we didn't have anybody then is because we were waiting on Max Home. Because we knew Max Home, we didn't know at the time, but we know now that they were the fit that we needed for this city and for this area to create these jobs. And I can't thank them enough for making the investment to come here. I can't thank uh, the governor and their staff and all the agencies for all the assistance that they've given us. I can't thank them enough for that. It's really been a blessing. And uh, it shows what having the faith and just keeping your nose to the grindstone and keeping on working how things can happen that are positive. And uh, it's a great thing for, uh, for our city. It's a great thing for our area. And at this time, I'm going to introduce Josh Silver with Max Home, and he's going to come. And he's going to share a little bit about their plans. Let's give him a warm welcome. sure everyone can hear this okay uh, Max Home has uh, been one company that I started with Larry Gentry my partner and my father and Bruno who some of you in the room know and have heard uh, Mayor mention um, we also had another company called Bauhaus that we had originally and that was the first time I was actually at a ribbon cutting ceremony it was in 1989 uh, my brother and I were forced to wear uh, seersucker suits and shorts and two kids from Canada had no idea that it could be so hot in one location standing in the sun just standing still so obviously in the 25 26 years we've learned something about a southern uh, 
factory opening ribbon cutting ceremony, you do it inside, right? <laughs> um, you know, we've also spent a lot of time in learning things about the business climate and figuring out how we're going to weather the storms ahead and continuously achieve in the furniture business. For this team, Selage in Alabama is the ninth factory that we've opened in the United States. Every day we advance in our fashion and push the limits of the furniture business with consumer products that consumers want to buy. These products reach markets like Singapore, the Philippines, the Middle East, Australia, Canada, and even Europe. Thriving in and against global competition, the Great Recession, and all the hurdles that come in front of us in the future. A pro-business environment and the hard work of dedicated employees has made success our destiny. I am so proud to say that we are 800 strong. Through all the challenges, we do not send one single job overseas, maintaining all of our core competencies and skill sets, raising the bar on design, quality, and on-time delivery. Our mission is clear and our future is bright. Craftsmanship and American manufacturing lives and prospers in Selage in Alabama at Max Home. We are so grateful to all of our employees, colleagues, friends, and supporters in this mission. Thank you very much. Thank you, Josh. I had the pleasure of meeting Josh for the first time shortly after uh, Marty had looked at the facility, and uh, he's an exceptional uh, young man, and uh, I look forward to uh, getting to know him a little bit better as we progress on this journey. Next, one, we're going to hear from Larry Gentry, who is the CFO of Max Home, and uh, I think I've probably talked to Larry more uh, other than Miss Brenda. I don't know where she's at back there, but uh, if you want to know who really runs it, Brenda's out there somewhere. She's the, she's the brains behind the thing. But anyway, I want to introduce Larry Gentry. Let's give him a warm welcome. Now, if you hear me speak, you're going to know why Josh went first, okay? Uh, uh, Josh is sailed. And, uh, you know, thanks to a lot of his efforts, you can't do this if you don't have sailing. It's a wonderful thing that we are a shipping product, not only all over the United States. We have some wonderful customers in the United States, and we're so glad to have them. But we also have distribution all over the world, and it really makes us, gives you a really good feeling to know that that product is not only seen here, it's seen in Canada, as I said, Mexico. You know, when you think about Mexico, you think things come here. We're sending product there. We're sending product to Europe. And it's all straight. All those things. And it, it, it's, it's really exciting for a little kid from Baldwin, Mississippi, uh, to grow up and have the opportunity that I've had with this company. And I've been with Marty since 1990 uh, through Bajas. And we started with Max Home in 2003. And like Josh said, we've gone through a terrible recession. We've survived that. Not only survived, but thrived. And it's so exciting. We've got so many good people. We've got here, and I, I want Brenda, wave Brenda, stand up, let people see who you are. Brenda's doing a good job with us here. Uh -huh. Every one, one of these people, and that gentleman back there is dressed so smartly in the back. Okay. Phil, say hello. Phil Collins, he's our, he's our plant manager, and, and uh, he asked me, he said, you know, is it going to be okay for me to wear these overalls? I said, Phil's what you wear every day. And uh, I said, you know, it would look nice to put on a white shirt and a bow tie, but he didn't do that. And, uh, but anyway, uh, enough of that. And, uh, but Scott had been such a pleasure to work with, not only Scott, but it all started with Dave. David put us in touch with Scott, with C3 in Northwest Alabama. Everybody that we've dealt with in this great state has been so supportive of what we've done. Our employees that we have hired, they have been so good to come to work 
you know, a lot of things, a lot of times you, you get young people, especially, look how many young people we have. Thank you so much. And, you know, we got to look into this. You mean I got to come every day? But, but these people, they're coming every day. We're so proud to be here. This is going to be a great facility. Now, we've got 80 people here now. I'll be surprised if we don't have 150 by this time next year. So we, we plan on packing furniture in this company. <laughs> before this year's out. So we're real excited about what's going on. We're so proud of our staff that's here. We're so proud of our employees. They're coming along. We're making more product every week. And, you know, we're just, it's, it's going to really, really be good. You know, to think that the, that the governor of the great state of Alabama will take out of his busy schedule time to come and witness this today, we are so thankful. Thank you. We appreciate you. I couldn't stand up here without talking about Judge Rogers. Okay? Judge Rogers, the first time I came in this building, he got me by the arm, he pulled over the side. And Mr. Gentry, I don't know you, but I'll tell you this about Soldier at Alabama. He says, if you'll come over here and give us a chance, you're going to find some dead gum good employees. <laughs> you were right. You were right. And and uh, but he he told me he told me the truth. I don't know, I don't know if he tells the truth all the time. <laughs> but he told me the truth about that. Uh, we're also we're, we're so grateful also to the uh, industrial board so that this really happened in a, in a really quick way it really happened fast and uh, Scott Scott really pushed it along David pushed it along the industrial board pushed it along uh, look, we had the, we had the, the career centers here pushed it along we had a we were just talking about how cold it was today. We had the job fair. Not cold anymore. But, uh, you know, we had a job fair just after the first of the year at the Baptist Church, downtown Sulphur. Now we have 80 employees. So moving along, moving along really fast. And also, I would be remiss if I didn't mention Jim Mayer of the Alabama Department of Economic and Community Affairs. They're very involved. They're going to give us some grant help to help with roads and infrastructure here. We're so grateful for that. Again, I will get out of the way and, and let, the, let the smart people talk. But we're so glad, so glad to be here. And we're so glad to be in a place that wants us here, in a state that is business, the business climate is friendly, and that they're willing to help. Thank you very much. Thank you, Larry. Uh, I've come to be real good friends with Larry uh, along the way, and uh, he, uh, we talk, have talked a lot about different things and uh, just become good friends, and uh, it's been a pleasure to meeting him and being involved with this project. Next, I'm uh, going to call uh, our State Senator, Gerald Allen, uh, to the podium. I met Gerald sometime back in early part of 2014. I believe uh, they were working on redistricting lines and uh, we didn't know who our state senator was going to be. We had had Senator Bedford for so long and then lo and behold one day uh, Senator Allen came by and wanted to introduce himself and uh, so we met and talked for a few minutes and next month he came by again and then next month he came by again and I thought well I guess he's going to come by every month. Maybe he don't think I can remember who he is. <laughs> But I guess he knew he had an election coming up that year. But uh, anyway, uh, he came by at Christmas, and uh, we were getting ready to uh, go down to the community center to give away some uh, fruit baskets to some elderly people. And I said, I said, Senator Allen, you want to go with us? He said, sure, I'll go with you. So I really, really appreciate him taking time out of his schedule to go down with us to uh, meet with some of the elderly people. But uh, let's give him a warm welcome, and then uh, he's going to introduce uh, our guest speaker, Governor Bentley, after that. Let's, let's welcome Mr. Allen. Good morning, thank you, uh, Mayor, and uh, I want I want to thank Max Holmes for their commitment. Josh and Larry, appreciate you so much. 
Uh, Mayor Colvin asked me what I introduced the governor, and uh, and I said, well, certainly I will. And uh, you know, sometimes back the governor introduced me in a place, and uh, he bragged on how well I looked. And because of that, because of that, he's been my doctor since 1978. <laughs> so, governor, I appreciate that. <laughs> But anyway, let me just share a brief personal story with you that, that happened to me last week. I was in a, a national conference in Santa Fe, New Mexico, with state senators and house members and other government officials all over the country. And we was uh, dealing with the huge issue of EPA. Many of you in this room understand the problems that we're facing as a nation. But the problem is that uh, the government is trying to, to fix things in the wrong direction. And so we had a session there at that conference. They were showing a video. The only governor in the state, uh, in the nation, that addressed us that morning was our governor, Robert Bentley. And it brings pride and joy to me to know that uh, our governor is, is leading the way when he's talking about energy, talking about how we can provide low-cost energy to our families here in Alabama, not only here in Alabama, but throughout the country. So it's, it really was a privilege for me to be sitting with all those people across the nation and for our governor to address us on video. So, Governor, we appreciate that as well. Not only that, but uh, I had the privilege as well to, to serve with a governor uh, in the House of Representatives. He served two terms. Many mornings that uh, the governor and I would meet together and talk about the issues. And, uh, and although uh, in, in, current, in current days, the issues has, has not been very, very easy, in which the governor and his staff and the House and the Senate has been coming together and, and hopefully sometimes in August that we can find some compromise and, and solutions to the issues we're facing our general fund. But the governor has, has since in his second term, Larry, he, he is working for nothing. He made a promise to the citizens of Alabama that he would not receive a paycheck until the state is in full employment, which is 5.2. Unemployment today is, is running around six. 0 .0, 6 .1 unemployment, and so today is, is a milestone as well, not only for, for Mark County and Sullivan, but for the state of Alabama, and, and to let's go ahead and see if we can get a paycheck to the governor. So that's, that's, that's not good. Um, governor, uh, like many of you and myself, you know, I've raised on a farm, and and uh, the governor was, was raised on a farm as well, and he knows what it's like to, to come from nothing. And he has been very successful. And uh, he's uh, he, a wonderful family, three sons, and I think six granddaughters. Okay, all right, so anyway, so Miss Diane has been a wonderful first lady uh, to the state. And, uh, he uh, served in the uh, Air Force, and uh, and, and uh, he's uh, had a, a very successful practice in Tuscaloosa for a number of years. Really, and truly, for me to stand up here today and try to introduce the governor, I, it's my hope that you know him. You know his heart, man of uh, character, integrity, one that you can trust, and uh, we're very proud of Governor Robert Bentley. I present to you, the Governor. First, let me say uh, I'm sorry that I'm late, but uh, you can't get here on time, just get here when you can. That's what I tell these guys, you know, when they're late uh, to, to meetings with me. And uh, so, but at least you're in air conditioning. And that's a good thing. I, I want to say this. I want everyone who is an employee here to raise your hand.
because I want to say this. Max Home, welcome to Sullivan and welcome to Lamar County. You have already expressed this, but you're only going to be as good as mostly ladies, but there's some gentlemen here too, as these that are here today, and you know that. And I can say this about workers in Alabama, and as I sell companies or try to recruit companies from all over the world, our number one asset is our workforce. That's our number one asset. You know, I was in Germany about a year ago and I met with the uh, CEO of uh, Mercedes. I asked him, I said, how many of your people don't show up for work every day? And he said, uh, well, about seven or eight percent. And I thought, that's a lot of people. He, I said, well, how many people don't show up for work in Tuscaloosa? So he said, well, I don't know, but I'll find out. And about two weeks he got back to me and he told me, he said, 0.6%. 0.6%. That's the difference. Because we have a workforce that is second to none in this state. And our workforce training is good. But we have people who take pride in what they do. And y'all are the backbone of this company. So I want to recognize y'all because you're the most important part of the company. You know, uh, as, as this project came into being, Mayor, I, I think that John Mark, my oldest son, who, by the way, is here with me today, and you've already recognized him, he told me about, how many times, John Mark, about five times, he said, Daddy, are you going to help that company up in Sullivan? Where is the mayor? Okay. So this this has been a family pushed thing. So he said they need some, uh, you know, some uh, industrial access money uh, or, or some of that money that comes from the Department of Transportation. Or I don't think he knew exactly what it was. But, and so I kept pushing the Department of Transportation to uh, to make sure that we got the money that was needed for that. And, and of course, we have Jim Byard, who is fan, he's a fantastic ADECA director. Uh, he's going to help with some of the projects here from the state. But I want to thank uh, everyone who uh, has been involved in this. You know, economic development is a team effort. And, and C3, this team of... That means time to get back to work? Is that what that means? Or is that lunchtime? Lunchtime, you know, I can tell that. <laughs> uh, but C3 and, and local economic developers are really what entice companies to come to an area. On a state level, we can sell Alabama, and I can sell the workforce. I can sell all the things and the environment that we have in this state to recruit industry into Alabama. But unless local leaders sell their area, just like, uh, the judge, was it the judge that pulled you aside and said, this is the best place in the world? Okay. See, that's what selling the area means. And having a facility, this is a great facility. Having a facility like this uh, really makes a difference. But I'm happy to be here today. This week, I, I, I was. I was up in the, uh, Hackleburg uh, on a Wednesday, and we opened a grocery store. And, uh, you know, that is, uh, that's major if you don't have a grocery store and have to drive 12 or 15 miles to buy your groceries. So we were able to do that this week, and we helped them get some money in order to do that because they were totally destroyed by the tornado, you remember, in 2011. But it's good to be back in this area. This is an area that really needs industry. And we want to work hard to try to bring more industry to this area. And I want to work with our local economic development C3 and, and other areas around here in northwest Alabama. Uh, we need better infrastructure in this area. I wish we had more money to put in our infrastructure. Uh, we need more roads running north and south. Uh, you know, we have I-22 and, and we have uh, some roads, but it's just, we just don't have the infrastructure that we need here. But we do have the people. And I can tell you that's the most important. So it's good for me to be with you today, and I know we got several speakers, so I'm not going to talk very long, and the dinner bell just rang. 
Everybody's getting hungry. So thank you for letting me be with you today, and God bless y'all. And thank you for y'all's hard work. Thank you, Governor, and uh, thank you for your commitment to our area. It was probably at least five times, <laughs> maybe ten. I don't know. Uh, I, John Marks probably wished I would forget his phone number sometimes. I had called him so much and just said, hey, uh, can you just kind of relay a message for me? But uh, anyway, I appreciate it. I appreciate it very much. Next, uh, we're going to recognize uh, Mr. Jim Byard, who is the director of uh, Alabama Department of Economic and Community Affairs who has been instrumental in uh, giving us some commitments to do some infrastructure work here. So I'm going to introduce him now, so that's what. Thank you, Doug. Uh, Doug's been a big help, and uh, anytime we've ever needed anything, he's always provided us with the resources that we needed on this facility, and I can't thank him enough. Again, I want to thank everyone for coming out today. Uh, I especially want to thank uh, my city council. I have a few members that are here today, uh, Cynthia Somerville, down here, Mr. Thomas Blaylock, Rob Bowman are here. So I appreciate all their help and support on this project. And Mike Franklin as well is sitting here. Sorry, Mike, didn't mean to forget you. Uh, but uh, it, it is a team effort. And uh, if it hadn't been for these ladies and gentlemen uh, standing behind and, uh, and supporting this project, it wouldn't be here today. Along with our industrial board members, I don't know how many of them are here. I know uh, Jay is here, and uh, I, don't know, I don't know where they're all sitting, but Wayne's here. But uh, I really appreciate all their support, and uh, like I said, it's been a, it's been a group effort. And uh, but I really can't thank the state and uh, Governor Bentley enough for all the support that they've given us and Jim out of their office. And uh, we're going to have a ribbon cutting shortly, and we're not going to go outside. We've got a ribbon set up back here, so we're going to go back here. So everybody's going to be in that picture. We're just going to kind of turn around and have that done. Then uh, we'll move from there. I think we've got some refreshments, and if people want to take some time to visit, I uh, know they can. I know the governor's probably got a tight schedule, and he may have some other places to get to. But again, we thank everyone for being there. Before we do that, I'm going to ask Miss Angela to come back to the podium, and I'm going to ask her to bless the food before we do the ribbon cake. Praise God. We thank God again for government. Praise God. We thank God for everything that's been done and said. If you would, bow your heads, please. Father God, we thank you, God, for this day, and this day has been blessed, God. And we pray, God, that you would touch the food that we're beginning to partake. God, we would ask that you would bless the hands that prepared it. God, bless it and sanctify it for the nourishment of our body. In the name of the praise, and everybody said amen. amen. <laughs> All right, y'all in the back come up a little bit and y'all squeeze in. Keep coming, we can't see everybody. <laughs> yeah, that'd be good. Y'all ready?